Hey everyone, this is Dave. Thank you for watching as always. Today, I thought it would be a good time to take a look at potential future space applications and business models, partly because we all know Rocket Lab is looking into developing their own space constellation in the future, and there's lots of potential use cases out there for a space constellation, partly also just because I think space is super cool and uh, researching some of these new technologies is just cool and fun. <laughs> Launch costs have been falling dramatically and are due to continue falling dramatically with reusable launch vehicles including Starship, Neutron, New Glenn, many others, Relativity, and that combined with advances in technology is allowing all sorts of new businesses to be viable which were not viable in the past. And so what I'd like to do is a video series going over some of these potential new business models and talking about how they would work. Hopefully you find this interesting. Today we'll be talking about space-based solar, both beaming solar power from satellites to other satellites and the advantages there, as well as beaming solar power straight from space down to ground stations and using that power on the ground. I'm sure Count, if you watch this, you can tell us a lot more details about how this potential business could work, but this is just going to be a high level overview. Before we do dive into that, I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you are already a subscriber, thanks so much for that. Those comments and likes and shares always help out as well. With that out of the way, let's dive into the exciting future of space-based solar energy. With the recent comments Rocket Lab CEO Sir Peter Beck has made around his company's ambitions towards owning and operating their own satellite constellation, a flurry of speculation has started around what they could be planning to build. The largest efforts in this field are currently all focused around providing internet access, including the SpaceX Starlink, Amazon Kuiper, and AST Space Mobile Internet constellations. There are many other potential business cases on the horizon as access to space becomes cheaper and more readily available. I thought this would make it an interesting time to go over some potential next generation space business models in a new video series looking at the future of low earth orbit. Today, we are starting with space-based solar power companies. Starcatcher Industries, a startup based in Jacksonville, Florida, just recently announced its innovative venture to create the world's first space-based energy grid. The company aims to beam solar energy from their own satellites directly to spacecraft in low Earth orbit. This technology promises to deliver five to 10 times the power that spacecraft currently generate on their own. With a successful $12 million seed round, Starcatcher is very much a small long shot but this demonstration of a brand new type of space-based power grid is a fascinating idea for a new type of space power company. Potential benefits for customers include extending mission durations, enhanced data processing, reduced weight and cost and support for new, more power-intensive technologies, such as space data centers and more. Right now, Power-hungry Hall effect thrusters are often limited, but the available power a satellite's solar panels can capture. But if you increase the size of your panels to compensate for this, then your satellite will experience more drag in the thin upper atmosphere of Earth and have to compensate for that with yet more thrust. If you can beam extra power to a satellite without increasing the size of its solar array though, you can break out of this vicious cycle and significantly extend its operational life in orbit. Starcatcher plans to demonstrate its technology both on the ground and in space by late 2025. This breakthrough could significantly enhance the capabilities of satellites and other space operations, making it easier to power advanced technologies in orbit. And then of course, there is space-based solar power, also known as space solar power beaming, which is an exciting concept that could revolutionize clean energy production. The concept here is simple. Instead of beaming power from a satellite to another satellite, 
you capture solar power in space and beam it all the way down to power stations on Earth. By the way, if you are finding this video interesting, please consider hitting that subscribe button down below. Similar to our space-based telecommunication systems, space solar power stations collect and transmit usable energy instead of data. These stations would be equipped with large solar arrays that capture sunlight in space. The collected energy is then converted into microwaves and beamed down to Earth. Advantages of space-based solar power. Space solar power stations can be placed in orbits that provide energy to anywhere on Earth's surface, day or night. The resulting energy can be easily converted into electricity on Earth, providing clean energy with zero emissions. Transmitted energy can pass through clouds, ensuring consistent power supply. Currently, ground-based solar is limited to daytime use and blocked by cloud coverage and weather events. Space-based solar could bypass these limitations. A newly released NASA study examined the feasibility and potential impact of space-based solar power on the world's sustainable clean energy needs. The NASA report indicated that there are no clear technical showstoppers for an in-space solar power demonstration mission. Technologies under development by NASA's global partners could make space solar power beaming feasible within two decades. If space-based solar power accounted for just 5% of our national energy consumption, it would significantly reduce our carbon footprint. This technology could help move us beyond fossil fuels in an equitable, scalable, and distributable way. The U.S., the Air Force Research Laboratory, AFRL, is working on a similar project, the Space Solar Power Incremental Demonstrations and Research Project, SSPIDR. Last spring, the team successfully transmitted power in space and beamed detectable power to Earth for the first time. Meanwhile, the European Space Agency is in the early stages of an initiative called Solaris, exploring the technical feasibility, benefits, implementation options, commercial opportunities, and risks of space-based solar power. The studies will look at as wide a range of options as possible, including investigating all the different ways to move the energy safely and efficiently down to Earth radio frequency transmission, lasers, and simply reflecting sunlight down to solar farms on the ground. Such developments would require enormous numbers of expensive rocket launches. However, that cost is falling, thanks to the advent of reusable commercial launch vehicles. Silicon Valley startup Orbital Composites and Michigan-based Virtue Solus Technologies also announced plans on Feb 1st to conduct a 2027 space-based solar power demonstration. The 2027 mission is designed to showcase critical power generation technologies, including in-space assembly of solar panels and transmission of more than one kilowatt to Earth. The 2027 mission will be a precursor to large-scale commercial megawatt-class solar installations in space by 2030. Space-based solar power could hold tremendous promise for meeting our energy needs sustainably and improving the sustainability of low Earth orbit satellite constellations. As we continue to invest in research and development, we might be moving closer to a cleaner, brighter future. But there is still a lot of work to be done along the way.
So I think this is an exciting potential new business that we've seen some companies already popping up looking to provide power from satellites to other satellites. We are seeing a lot of exploration being done on sending power from space down to Earth and the benefits around that. Ultimately, I don't think this will end up being Rocket Lab's constellation. I don't think Neutron is as well suited to something like this as, say, a Starship, which just has a ton of volume and mass to orbit, which I think you're going to need if you're sending power from from space down to Earth. It's just a massive, massive amount of solar panels that you'd ultimately need. But I do think it's fascinating and the growing space industry is good for Rocket Lab, SpaceX, and all these other players as new businesses come online. They need launch, they need components, and that's all to the good for the space industry. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I'll be sure to check out what you think about this exciting new technology, how viable it is, how much sense it makes. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. It would be very much appreciated. I hope you guys have a great day, a great rest of the week, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.